I call Stuart Nash. I to speak in favour of the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf, environmental effects, transition provisions amendment bill. Mr Speaker, the last, um, the last national MP that stood up said that this had uh, wide support across the House. It was a fine piece of legislation that amended an even better piece of legislation. Mr Speaker, let me put the record straight. We are supporting this piece of legislation out of absolute economic necessity. We think this is a very bad way to draft legislation, Mr Speaker, and we think that the original bill was an absolute mess. Mr Speaker, this is not the way to draft legislation. And when, this, when that last MP stood up, the chair of the Select Committee stood up and he said that uh, it is vital that we support New Zealand's economic sustainability. We agree with them. That's why we're supporting it. But another thing that is absolutely vital, Mr Speaker, is the right of New Zealanders under a democratic process to appeal. What this bill does, in essence, is wipe away that ability to appeal. What this does is it forces a piece of legislation through. It's, it's not under urgency, but it is urgent, because if this legislation wasn't through, if Maui gas pipeline wasn't allowed to go ahead, then there would be catastrophic um, consequences for the economy. And we did have, a, we did have an incident, Mr Speaker, uh, when the Maui pipeline closed down. Uh, what happened is it cost about $40 million a day over five days, so we're talking about $200 million just for five days. This is why it is important that it does go through, but this is a very, very sloppy piece of legislation. And it, it's one of these things, Mr Speaker, that seems to be creeping in a little bit to this Parliament, and it makes me feel very uncomfortable. What we seem to be doing a lot of is amending bills, and I've spoken on a couple around Veterans Affairs and around superannuation. It's about amending bills that have been before the House in very recent times because of sloppiness in the way this went through the Select Committee. And when I hear people stand up and say that Chair did a great job for the Select Committee, I beg to differ, Mr Chair, because if the Chair of the Select Committee that put through the original EEZ legislation had picked this up, if the, if the, if the, MP had picked, if the MPs and the officials had picked this up, then we wouldn't need to be here. I mean, we can blame Shell Todd. It's a convenient thing to do. I don't blame Shell Todd. I just think this whole, this whole mess could have been avoided if we'd done things well. The other thing that, I, that really concerns me about this piece of legislation, Mr Speaker, is it plays into the sort of global brand we're trying to develop. And, and that's on two points. First and foremost, you know, gone are the days when New Zealand is seen as the cowboys of the Wild West. In the 1980s, we were viewed by the Americans, by the Brits and by Europe as the cowboys. They came over here, there was insider trading, it was, they ran roughshod over legislation and all manner of things which is now, thank goodness, which are now illegal, uh, no longer happen. But Mr Speaker, they used to. And what this does is this erodes our global brand just a little bit by saying, you know what, it is sloppy legislation. We don't know how to craft bills that allow uh, something of, uh, as important to our economic um, uh, or to our economy as the Maui gas field to go through, and it's sloppy. And this is not what this, this is not the sort of message, Mr. Speaker, that we want to send to international investors who are coming across to our country to, to, to explore our oil fields or to, 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 to work in our natural gas or to put up windmills or to invest in, in other forms of energy. What this does is this piece of legislation says, you know what, if they get it wrong in New Zealand, don't worry, they'll just legislate something through. It's how they work in New Zealand. That used to be the way and it should no longer be the way. And it's why this really concerns me. The other thing, Mr Speaker, is we're trying to build a global brand around clean, green, 100% pure. In fact, it's the brand we go out to the, uh, to the world with. And this started in 1984 when David Longy said no to nuclear ships. I think it was a completely unintended consequence, actually. But suddenly those around the world stood up and said, goodness me, that country actually stands for something. And ever since 1984, we have stood for something as a nation. And we go to the world with this clean green brand that is 100% pure. It's, it's the, the study done by, I think it was Deloitte's, uh, my main PwC, one of those big consultancies anyway, that said 80% of New Zealand businesses that seek to engage uh, in, in, ex, in the export trade try to leverage, or they do leverage off our international brand. Uh, the Ministry of Economic Development, when it existed, tried to quantify the value of this brand, and they said it was worth about $20 billion. 
But Mr. Speaker, if we, seek to, if we devalue this brand, and this goes a little bit into this, if we devalue this brand, then what we end up with, what we end up as, is just another small economy uh, as a, trading commodities into, this, into a shrinking global marketplace. And that is the last thing we can afford, because Mr. Speaker, our global brand is one of the very few things we've got that can't be reproduced in the back streets of Shanghai or an office block in Mumbai. It is our unique selling point, and it is our global point of difference. Anything, anything, Mr Speaker, that seeks to damage that brand or tarnish that brand must be banished. And the thing that I think, one of the things I think that this government has done very poorly over the last seven years, Mr Speaker, is damage our brand. Now let me give you one example. And this sort of plays into the whole, um, uh, into the whole uh, energy energy sector, and that is global warming. Now, it doesn't matter if you support global warming because there's a beachfront property and if sea levels rise by a metre, you're going to lose that property, or you want to save polar bears, or you want to save the world. It doesn't matter. The reason why I think it is so important is because, again, it plays into the global consciousness of what New Zealand stands for. <clears throat> and, Mr Speaker, we used to be leaders in this. Under the Clark government, we were out there leading the debate on the global stage, and now we're seen as laggards. And we're going to go to Paris, and we are going to be absolutely caned, and rightly so, Mr Speaker, and rightly so. Not only because of how we've let our global position slide, but we've actually let the reality of what we once stood for slide as well. And we have to stand for something. Mr Speaker, there's a couple of other points where I'd like to make that, um, that the previous National MP, um, I think, was a little di disingenuous around. There is something called the Energy Trilemma, and it's put out by, I think they're called the Global Energy Council. And what it does is it measures three very important um, uh, energy variables that go into making up um, a global ranking for our country. Now, Mr Speaker, we actually came in as 10th in the world, which is very, very impressive. But part of the reason for that is our, is our political stability. Um, and our economic strength. Now, you get that under any government. It's just what happens in a highly functional democracy like we've got. But the interesting thing, Mr Speaker, is in energy security, we're 16th, uh, um, up from 19th. But in energy equity, we have dropped from 18th down to 28th. And what energy equity is, is basically the ability of our, of our citizens to afford energy. And this plays into the whole fuel poverty argument. And what fuel poverty is, Mr Speaker, is the ability of people to afford electricity in order to heat their homes in the middle of winter. And we've got a real problem with this. And we, when we are 28th in the world in terms of energy equity, we've got a problem that we really need to address. And the other one is environmental sustainability. And again, Mr Speaker, this plays into our global brand. And we have gone from 36th to 42nd in the world in terms of environmental sustainability with regard to our energy sector. And that says to me that we need to work a lot harder in how we actually manage our energy sector. Now, now the electricity generation is a very good story. There's about 80 per cent renewable. And uh, the Labor Party and I even think the government has bought in to the, uh, to the target of 90% 90, 90 renewables by 2020. It's an admirable target by 2025, I stand corrected. It's an admirable target, and again, it's a great story. But when you combine it with the global perception of how we're doing, it's not particularly flash. And it, it, it all ties in, I, I'm gonna bring this back to the legislation, Mr. Speaker. It all ties in with this piece of legislation. And in a way, this epitomizes at the moment, this legislation epitomizes how we are treating our global brand, the sort of lackadaisical way that we're saying, it'll all be right, don't worry about it, if we get it wrong, we'll legislate it. The last speaker highlighted, and I have re-emphasised, how important passing this legislation is to our economic well-being. We can't have uh, the Maui gas field going down because a cost of $40 million a day is unconscionable. Uh, the fact that this employs 300 people in Taranaki is a vital part of regional infrastructure. But this, and I think even the, even the members on that side of the House will admit, well, they should admit, this is not a good way to do legislation, to pass legislation. It doesn't play into how we, how we see ourselves as a country. It is not a good way to sell ourselves internationally, both as a global brand or how we do business or how we manage our energy sector. Mr Speaker, Labor is supporting this not because we think it's a good piece of legislation, but because we think it is vital, um, it is a vital part of our economic infrastructure. But Mr Speaker, we would, um, 
we would really uh, request that we don't see any more pieces of this legislation, that the government gets the legislation right before they bring it back to the House. Thank you very much. I call Matt to 